Let's go. Mm. Give me one. Mm. Please. That's Turn the volume all the way up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, we got it. There's Kim Gray. <laughs> hey, sister. Hopefully, Sonia's doing good. Tiki. There's the man right there, the man of the hour. Hola, que pasó, Soli? Tomas, gonna see you in the morning, brother. <gasps> My twin! <laughs> All right. Do, 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 gonna find Caleb. And then we need Brandon in here, too. Here we go. Come on, guys. How, how are we doing? Every single, every single time. Every time. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? How are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here we go. Let me make sure I can hear y'all. All right, let me turn it up a bit. Let me, let me check my levels. Let me check the treble. Let me turn the treble up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all about that bass. All about that bass. Good setup. <laughs> Boom. Got it. <laughs> nice. Good reference. I can tell this is going to be a good one. Brand's al Brandon's already started. We're in, we're in for like five seconds. He's already cracking the dad jokes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, boys. I'll, I left my soda Cheers. over there. <laughs> hey, Caleb. Sorry? I said, how you been? Oh, I'm good, man. Good yeah, you. very good. It's, uh... It's like 8.30 in the morning where I am right now. Morning. But, uh, yes. Where but are you? Since we're doing a Friday night a Friday night thing for you guys, I'm, uh, I'm having a beer anyway. Breakfast beer. Where are some you right beer. now? Sorry? Where are you right now? Um, I'm in Taiwan. Yeah. Oh, so you had to leave. Yeah, visiting. Of course you are. <laughs> visiting family. I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming back in a few days, though. Um, so it's all, the trip's almost done. Nice. 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 Mm. I'd like to be your spot right now and enjoy the food. Mm. Yeah. And the weather. <laughs> I, I hear you guys, a lot of people over there are experiencing some crazy cold snaps, like even over in Texas and stuff. Man, yeah. we are still, so it's supposed to get down to 19 below Fahrenheit uh, tonight and wind chill of negative 55. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Good we're stuff. at single digits here in Michigan. Single digits, so. So wow. bad. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah. Cool. We got uh, a couple lists of questions. There's questions already popping in. Um, nice. Then, uh, so, yeah, if anybody, if this is your first time here, I'm Angelo. Hi, live from the Razor Company. And um, the beautiful man over there, that is Brandon. Uh, Brandon Shaves. And then that beautiful guy over there. Good Lord. That is Caleb. <laughs> uh, a house full of beautiful people tonight. I know, man. We're gonna break the internet tonight, boys. <laughs> yep, it's done. It's over. Yeah, we haven't even started yet, and it's already over. It's already <laughs> over. <laughs> so, so Caleb is the inventor of this awesome beauties right here, which is Ellsworth razors. So, look at that, gorgeous. Purdy. I've yet to own this one. I have my Copper Kent, which I absolutely love and adore. And this one is definitely next to my wheelhouse for sure. Oh, that's the OC, isn't it? Oh, oh, yeah, that's, that's oh, yeah. pretty. Yeah, that is gorgeous. It's nice and beefy. Made in the U.S. by a Canadian design. <laughs> so, nice. yeah. Definitely love this. I mean, thought and everything like that well we'll get into all that so of course you know first question right off the back is caleb wh where did this come where did this like what got you into wanting to design razors um so for i feel like you know probably a lot of the regulars know this by now but um my background Thanks. has always been in art hmm? sorry sorry go ahead oh yeah, I, I was just thinking my background has always been in art and design. It's like I, I went to art school as a like a teenager in high school, and then um, 
I studied classical art in, in college and university, and then I actually got into video game development. And um, my day job is as a, a lead artist for a video game company. So, um, so I, lead, I actually lead a team of artists in my day job. And then um, I fell into wet shaving the same way just about everyone does, right? Um, can we, how, can I clear this? I have like a pop-up at the bottom and I can't see, sorry. Um, okay, so yes, I, I got in just about the same way everyone else does. Um, just discovered it, you know, was looking for something different, trying to get away from the cartridges. Um, started kind of realizing it was a little different once I, I picked up my first razor and uh, soap and everything. So then I started doing some searches and once you start doing the searches, the algorithms take over and they start showing you stuff. And um, they started showing me stuff on Instagram. And Instagram being a visual place, and with all of these beautiful shave of the day photos and everything, that immediately caught my eye because there's just, you know, so much amazing artistry in the in in this space, right? Like, who would have thought a shaving bowl could look like that, right? It's like that that's incredible. Um, or you know, the, the soaps and the labels, or like this this beautiful brush right here, right? Just yep. amazing. And and so I, I never knew these things existed, and I started seeing all of these photos, and I started digging into it more, and um, the more I clicked through, you know, I think some of the first ones that I, I started to really notice and, and discover, um, Carve was one of the first ones. Uh, I, then I noticed Timeless, some of their beautiful designs, Blackland Razors. Um, I discovered the Yates Precision Manufacturing page, and the, the really interesting about, thing about Yates is that they, they were machinists first, you know, um, and they, that's what they did. They ran a machine shop and then they got into wet shaving and designing razors. And so um, their page is like machine, it's basically like machine porn. They just show a lot of videos of how the machines work. And so then I, I kind of put two and two together. I was like, look at these beautiful designs and oh, this is how they make them. They, they literally carve these things out of steel. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started to get like really excited about that and I just for a hobby just for fun I decided to see if I could design my own razor in the three software that I use for video games but without really any intention of making a functional razor it was just making designs and I started posting them on Instagram and um, it really people just grabbed onto it really quickly a lot of people that I know to this day like as friends and that I know really well were some of the original people to comment on those those first drawings and they would ask me questions like, oh, you know, when is this coming out and stuff? And I'm just like, it's not, it's not coming out. I'm just, I'm just making a design. Um, but, but then the more people started to get interested in it, I, I started looking into how to actually make it. So I started researching it. You know, I, I bought some books on CNC manufacturing, reading up on CNC manufacturing, figured out the software that you need to, to actually make the model. And I, I just started working on, on the designs. And um, the original prototype, interesting fact, the original prototype for that razor that you're holding right there, the first one, which was in brass, that was completed just over a year ago. Um, wow. It, 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 it came like, through. Yeah, I think, oh. I, think, I think the stainless steel version landed um, on my desk maybe early February, um, the beginning of February. And then that's when the whole pass around started and everything. Yeah. So and then, uh, look how far yeah. these are progressed here. Hmm? So look how far it's progressed in a year. I know. It's yeah, it's pretty nuts, actually. Yeah, and then these came out right—the inkwell face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's, is just gorgeous. Yeah. Like, that is something you have sitting on—I mean, right on either on your sink or in your den. And this is something you show off. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. yeah. It Respect. I probably should have released it with the with the stand, but uh, the stand didn't come till a while later. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it they pay pair. I mean, just perfectly, you mm. know. Um, and I love that. Yeah, that you have the you know the opening in the bottom for it to drain or anything like that. In case um, if some people, you know, use their razor and put it away, I you know, just meticulously clean mine before I put it. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just the, the machining, the, the precision, just, I mean, the amazing job that they do on, on these. So, oh, Steve, yeah. that's now we need a, a back in black, Dracant. A back 
black and black your mm -hmm. yeah that would match perfectly with this beauty right here mm, like an aluminum uh, basically the same material as as this but a razor i just used my altair the first time today oh, excellent yeah. excellent uh -huh. How did you? How did you like it? How, how does loved it feel? It. Loved it. I yeah. love the weight of it, um, and I love that G five C knot as well. It's so close to being a natural hair brush without being natural hair. It kind of gives me a, a a feel between like between a badger and a boar, like because of the the backbone that's on it. Then it's got that soft kind of badger top to it, yeah. and then that that synthetic hair still kind of soaks a little water up unlike all of the other synthetic hairs that i've used so it's a I mean, yes. it's, it's a very cool knot it's a, a really good hybrid between kind of everything it has it has flow through which is crazy because a lot of synthetics don't have flow yeah. through but you can like actually get flow through with this knot it's and it actually breaks in which is weird i um speaking of which by the way congratulations andrew ap shave co one knot of the year um, on the Ladder Talk Awards today. So uh, G5C won one knot of the year. So uh, I don't know. That was congratulations. And also um, it's fortuitous because that's the knot that, that I decided to use in, in the brush. So, so I got a note yeah. me by the man himself. And um, so Jason is going to give away a copper cant razor and stand tonight. What? Yeah. That's do I have to say crazy? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. So I know, uh, Brandon. I was watching your video actually before we even when I was waiting for, um, uh, you know, to get in here. So, uh, you said you had some questions for the man too. Actually, yeah. Um, sorry. Before we do that, and before we we move on from that, um, I want to match Jason. Oh. Yeah. But I want to match Jason, not with a copper cant. Um, I'm, I have a restock of the stainless steel coming in a week or two. Um, it's, it's been a while. It's, it's been a long time coming. I think the last stock that we had was, you know, during the Black Friday Christmas period. So um, the newest restock is, is almost here. And I want to give away a Dracant razor, stainless steel Dracant razor. Um, winner's choice. <laughs> so win winner's choice. Choice, you can you choose your finish, choose your plate. Oh, gosh. He's killing me, bro. Wow. So you guys go ahead. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> that is very nice. Oh, that is man. very good. And yes, I love it. I love it. Heck yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> so my question for, for you, Caleb, is, um, you know, for the for the um, the gaming geek and all of us, how mm. in the world did you get into the video gaming world and then two can you name some of the um some of the rather big um gaming franchises that you are a part of sure yeah yeah absolutely um so the way i got in was uh when i graduated from art school a uh, big surprise it's kind of hard to make a living as an artist you know I, I i'm not sure if you knew that but uh it's it's difficult and so you know i, I graduated as a, a a young man you know 24 years old 23 24 years old was trying to figure it out and i spent about a year doing contract work all kinds of contract um 2d design work i did like t-shirt designs album covers for local bands bus advertisements and like magazine ads and just storyboards for random uh, indie films and stuff, just everything you can think of, just trying to make ends meet. And then I was working um, just regular kind of day job to survive, right? I was working as a night security guard. And um, then I ran into some college friends of mine who were in the same art program as me uh, on, on the streetcar in, in Toronto. And they were like, hey, man, how are you doing? And I was telling them, and I'm like, what are you guys up to? And they're like, oh, yeah, we joined this program, this um, this video game art program at the local college and they're like you should come by and check it out and i'm like when and they're like what are you doing right now we're on our way there so i went with them i just i just rode to the college with them and they showed me what they were working on and I, as soon as i saw it i was just like whoa i was like this is my jam this is what i want to do so 
I looked at the, you know, entry requirements and I just worked for the next six months on my portfolio and everything. And I applied, I got in and that was pretty much it. And it's not a straight shot. When you graduate from that program, you don't just get right in. Um, you still got a break in. So it took me about maybe another year after that to get my first gig. And then, um, and then once you get in and you start getting experience, you know, you can, you can pretty much build a career after that. So that's how I got in. Um, in terms of the titles that I've worked on, my first major big title was Bioshock 2, for any of the, the horror game fans out there. Uh, I worked on a game called The Darkness 2, then Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 3, um, Battlefield 4, Battlefield Hardline, Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, Far Cry Primal, Far Cry 5, Watch Dogs Legion, and um, recently, oh, I worked on Halo Infinite, and now I'm working on uh, a live game called Chivalry 2. So that's, those are some of the larger titles. That's not all of them, but those are the big ones. I knew a lot of people would get a big kick out of that, so I'm certainly glad <laughs> to, to get you to say that. <laughs> Congratulations, man. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a, a pretty nice... Um, uh, pretty nice uh, amount of things that you've been on and a lot of things that a lot of people know. It's, it's, I, I, you know, I've been doing it for over 15 years now. So for me, it's just like going to get milk. You know, I don't, I don't really think about it, but yeah, I, I imagine for like, for some people who aren't really familiar with the whole thing, it probably seems kind of cool, but I, I feel like it's a job just like any other, you know, especially after 15 years. You're just like, okay, it's a, it's a job. Um, incidentally, by the way, guys, I lost the comments. So, um, oh, unfortunately, I can't. Yeah, I can't read them right, right now. Right, we got you back. Don't worry about it, brother. If it gets if it gets rough, we'll let it happen. Anyways. Or you can okay. come back out and get back in, whatever, whatever yeah. you like. Yeah. I, I kind of I want to see the comments, you know? That's part of the fun, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, back in. Yeah. Are you guys cool with that? Can, I, can I leave and come back? No, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. God, that Definitely. Game, I can't believe he would just leave. I, I haven't even left yet. What a dude. loser, man. man. <laughs> at, least, <laughs> at least have the social etiquette to wait for me to leave first. Oh, I thought you were already gone. My bad. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> right I thought there was an internet internet conversion rate between Canada. Oh, wait, he's not in Canada. No. Oh, he's in Taiwan. So That's why. Maybe Maybe his VPN's not working correctly. He's got to be great. All right, I guess I'll accept him back in here. We might as well. I mean, you know, he is the, the star tonight. <laughs> Plus, he's giving away some sweet gear. There he is. <laughs> we have one extra spot. Maybe Jason would like to, to come in on the fourth spot. Oh, hey. Th thanks. Thanks, Sully. <laughs> so thank God that guy's gone. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, let's get to some questions. Let's see what we got going on here. Um, well, you can still catch up on the uh, the comments there. Um, mm, Tiki, I don't know this. I, don't, I guess Caleb would know what that is. Did you have, did you see the movie called something like art school? Really? No. I, I I don't know. I don't know what that is. The only oh, sorry. Like Harry? Hmm. I, I feel like I feel like I probably should watch it now. Yeah, the only good bad movie that I know of is The Room. Watch it if you haven't. The Room? <laughs> the Room. <laughs> not not Room because there's a movie called Room and then there's a movie called The no. Room. Oh, you're talking about the one that was like funded by that one dude um in like San Francisco or whatever. Yeah. Is that so it? It directed it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then they made they made a movie about that movie about the guy that made and James James Franco played played the guy. I can't remember his name right now. But I can't, uh, it is yeah. so bad. It's good. Yes. Everybody's mm -hmm. homework tonight. Go and watch the room. Scott. Yeah. Big Papa knows what's up. Um. All right. Edison Road. Here we go. Back on track. What plate did you hold up first, Caleb? Uh, I, well, I think I only held up one plate, so um, I, that would have been the open comb, the OC Plus. It's pretty. Uh, yes. 
Oh, for anyone who's interested too, and this might come out in a in a question. I'm sure this question will come up later, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get ahead of it and say it now. For anyone anyone who's interested, um, the plus version of the Copper Cat is in production. So we have the plus version coming out for that guy, and um, the prototype for the TI Dracant is coming back like next week. So. We have we have a T. I. Dracant uh, being developed with Yates right now, and oh, wow, it's looking very promising. Nice. That's going to be money. Ah, P Peter knew Tommy Wiseau. There Tommy we go. Wiseau. Wiseau. Something. Wiseau. Like the guy with the guy with the good hair. <laughs> the it's very the... French. Yeah. Wiseau. <laughs> Wiseau. But he's not French. I, I think he's like, I don't know, somewhere in northern Europe or. Yeah. Something he's like different. that. He's different. That's for sure. Um, here we go. Oh, it's my beautiful bride. Uh, Crystal asks, any thoughts about an AC single edge razor? She knows her jam, man. Oh. She knows her stuff. Good question. Hmm. Actually, there have been thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there have been thoughts about a lot of things. There's been thoughts about an adjustable razor, like a proper adjustable razor. Um, you know, not... What what I, I heard it best described, I think it might have been DK who described, um, you know, because Rock, Rockwell, they call their, their razor an adjustable, but I wouldn't call it an adjustable um, because you can swap like, out the plates. Yeah. Like, te technically, the Dracons is in the same category in a way because you can swap out the plates, right? That's not an adjustable. I don't know what you would call that. Um, he had a word for it, though. Customizable, I guess. Maybe that's a customizable. Because in a way, you can, like, build your own razor. Um, you can swap out plates and stuff. But, like, a true, true adjustable, like a Rex or um, or like a, a Tatara, um, Muramasa, right? Something like that where you – it's just one thing and you can change the settings on it. Uh, but one thing I'm learning about those is the, the amount of different pieces and moving parts and everything uh, – that are needed to develop it. And just for, you know, for, for uh, clarity, when it comes to CNC, especially, every single part that you run, you have to run, um, and usually multiple different machine processes, right? So you can't just drop this plate on a mill and call it done. You gotta put it on a mill in one orientation and one run process, one process, and then flip it over and then run another process. And then if you need to do like part marking, like um, engraving or whatever, you got to move it somewhere else and then do another process, right? And uh, even with things like handles and stuff, you know, you put a handle on a lathe and you can turn it on the lathe and that'll get you part of it. But then, for instance, like these, uh, these grooves that run up the side, you got you to gotta mill those. So that's like another process. And there are some lathes that are like three axis or five axis lathe mills where you have milling operations and turning operations on the same machine, which can make it uh, more efficient. But long, long story short, the more parts you add, the more complex it is to build a single razor, right? right. Um, every, part, every part costs cycles, every part costs money, every part is materials. That's why adjustable razors are so expensive. When you yeah. see an adjustable razor. I think a lot of people, um, it's like a big stamp, and they just go, boom, boom, and here your parts come out, and that's not how that works. No. Yeah. I mean, that's what, you know, Gillette was being, it was a lot of stamping, mm -hmm. you know, that they got into, um, you know, mass producing all that. That's why we can find them. But to me, I mean, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my Slim, I love my, my 195 Fat Boy, but this the, the solid piece there's less room for failure. Um, and I think you can get into more design aspects with a solid piece like this. Um, so, like, if you have something like this, imagine this being an adjustable, then you're going to lose spots for your dial. You know, you're going to have to accommodate something for the head. But that's just my thinking, you know. But um, the bottom of that razor sure does look like it wants to twist. Yeah, I know. And that's the thing. If, you know, you look at it. It kind of you know, does. So... Kind of makes you kind of makes you feel like you should twist it, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. The seat like this be you know an iteration of it into an adjustable with this exact design would be pretty sweet. Um, but 
like I said, I'm partial to the solid bar because, I mean, I you know I watched Yates like today they were making they were showing some of these handles being made and just watching that process and everything is just gorgeous. It's just it's to me it's just I don't know it's very calming to watch so <laughs> it's so and cool. There there are a few major differences between the stamping, um, you know, die casting or injection molding and CNC. Um, the number one difference, though, the main difference is the tolerances, because die casting is fundamentally a less precise um, process. It's like 3D printing. If I was to make a razor, design a razor for 3D printing, I would have to leave uh, in the, the design file, I would have to leave a larger gap between the post holes and the posts um, to give room for that lack of precision because the 3D printing cannot reach that same level. And the same thing is with die casting. So you'll notice most die cast razors, if you pick them up and you try to like wiggle the, the top cap and the plate, there's more, there's more play, there's more wiggle room. Yeah. And yeah. you know, with CNC, nothing there. <laughs> yeah. And with CNC, well, there's gotta be something because you need to leave some tolerances there. And especially with blades, because even though blades are somewhat standard, there's still some variance between the holes on the blades. So you gotta allow for that variance, which means one blade might fit a little bit more loosely on the posts than another. And also, because you have three components that need to fit together, you have the top cap, the base plate, and the blade. And all of those have, you need to allow for some variance. Yeah. Then you need you need a little bit of room, right? Because it could the hole could be a little bit wider or a little bit tighter. The post could be a little bit wider or a little bit tighter, right? And so um, there's always going to be a tiny bit. But if you're if you care and you're really tight on it and you kind of focus on that, you can get it down to the point where it's like almost non-existent. And th that's the main difference. Yeah. It it's, I mean, like I said, I keep saying it, but it's just the precision of it. It is just amazing and how how well they got that down. So, yeah. um, I know, I remember when you released it, um, and again, because I'm thinking about people who may not know, um, or those of us that were lucky to watch the live when you were doing it, um, you know, the for the Dracont and everything, but the design inspiration. So the, the your inspiration for the actual you know, the design of this, the look of it, mm. and just the, the overall touch and feel, just the, you know, how you came to, to create this. Um, so I can, I can tell you there, there are a few inspirations. The first thing I want to do is give a shout out to my boy. I don't know if he's in here. He, um, I've said, it, I've said it once and I'll say it again. He was my first friend in wet shaving. First guy that I ever met in here. I knew him before I started designing this razor. And that is um, John Bonham, Cape Cod Wet Shaving. Amazing, awesome, awesome dude. Um, yeah, the guy, the guys can't say can't say enough good things about that guy. But he's my first friend in wet shaving, and uh, he he likes video games. And when he found out I worked in video games, we got to chatting and stuff. He's a fan of some of the games I worked on, Dead Space in particular. Uh, but we're also one of our favorite games, both of us of all time, is a game called Skyrim, which. Um, is, you know, it's based in kind of Nordic um, mythology, and it's about dragons and stuff, you know, the uh, dragonborn and everything. And um, for those who don't know, I have um, some, some ancestry that comes from that region of the world as well. Um, and my last name is actually a translation from uh, the Viking last name Aylward. So, it got translated into English, Aylesworth. And in fact, the Aylesworth logo is based off of the Viking runic alphabet. So that's like a like a Viking symbol, but it also makes an A. So um, that that's where that kind of came from. I just thought it was, you know, it was kind of a, a little cool touch. And John and I got together and we were talking and I was showing him some of the designs that I was making. And this was, again, before I even thought about making it into a real razor. And he said, you should, you should make a Dragonborn razor, like base one off of Skyrim and call it the Dragonborn. And then I was like, you know, I, I don't think I can do that because I'm pretty sure Bethesda would sue me, but um, <laughs> maybe I could make one called the Dragon Edge. And um, I started looking into some designs. And so if you look at the top cap here from the side, and it's kind of hard to see like the, the cap and plate combo, but um, there's like a T-slit in where the blade fits. 
And that actually is modeled off of a helmet, a Viking helmet. And then there, some people have commented on the slot in the top of the, the cap. And it seems kind of extraneous, like no other razors really have that, right? So a lot of people wonder why is that there? It's, it's actually just a design feature. It doesn't change the function of the razor, but it kind of makes it look like a Viking helmet with the horns. And, um, and then this here, this is actually based off of like the wrap of a, a Viking axe or hammer. So, it, you know, if you think about it, it almost kind of looks like, like Thor's hammer, like a Mjolnir or something. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, and the handle's kind of the signature design. I don't think anyone else really has a handle like this. Nope. And if you look at the, the copper cans, it's similar. You know, it has a similar pattern up top and at the bottom, but it's just modified to have that taper in the middle and, um, you know, with some, some subtle changes to it. So I'll tell you exactly where I, where I got this idea from. It was kind of a happy accident. Um, I, when I do design, what I do is I gather up inspiration of all of the razors that I like or all of the things that I like, partially for inspiration and ideas, but also so I can not do what other people have done. Yeah. Like I want to do something different. So when I put it all out there, then I can look at it and say, okay, this is what other people have done. How can I do something different? And um, this spiral is very common. It's like the barber pole. You know, you you can look at uh, any number of razors, right? Um, well, which which one is the, the British one? It's slipping my mind right now. It's like an OG razor. Oh, the... Um, um, above the time. Hmm? Uh, the the, oh. the um, British version of the um, Gillette Aristocrat. Yeah, there, I, I, was, um, I was thinking of Above the Tie. Um, above the Tie has one called, I think it's called a Windsor handle. And it's just, yeah. it's a spiral like this, right? Timeless has a, a barber pole spiral. Any number of razors have a barber pole. Um, but then I looked at um, the Blackland Blackbird. And the Blackbird has these uh, vertical flutes that go up the side. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, it's got these flutes that run vertically like this. And so I, I, I was like, hey, what would happen if I took a barber pole spiral and a vertical flute and I combined them together? And this is what you get. You get this, this kind of wrap looking thing that it kind of looks like a grenade or a rebar or something. I don't know, but it's, it's cool. Um, so that, that's where that came from. And then the, the head was just, that was just out of here. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't really have any inspiration for that. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely yeah. love it. I think it's it's just gorgeous. And then the other thing too is that, uh, I mean, I, I mean, even just the small details like your stamp at the bottom, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, details like that. I mean, it's just it's definitely premium. You know, for sure. It's it's like I said, it, it's an art piece. And no function. question, it's one of the most beautiful razors out there. No question. I love it, and I, like I said, I I love I have the the copper can, and I it it, it sits on my desk, and I stare at it, <laughs> waiting for stubble to grow so I can use it. <laughs> uh, That's what I do with all of my screen captures from your lives, Angelo. I just <laughs> I put them on my desk, and I stare at them. I'm just like, when I need something to hold me over until next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Got your back, bro. Don't worry about it. So <laughs> that man, that's a picture you need in the frame on your desk is him, is Brandon. Oh, my gosh. Who says <laughs> I don't? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yep, yep. She goes again. She is on it, man. She is just grilling you, man. My wife, Crystal, any plans for a slant? Uh, no, actually, that's one I have not considered yet. Um, it, there's just other ones that I feel like I would want to tick off first. Um, you know, probably the two most likely ones in terms of, like, different designs would be an Artist Club Single Edge and, and an Adjustable. Um, you know, for me, the Adjustable is kind of like the Holy Grail. I'd love to do it. It's such a design problem to, like, because, there, again, there's so many moving parts. And, you know, you can't... You can just raise the top cap and increase the gap, but a true adjustable should actually, in my mind, be like a Muramasa, where 
it not only raises the top cap uh, relative to the plate, or rather, you could have the top cap fixed and you could raise lo lower and raise the plate, mm. but you would also want to move those safety bars so that you increase or decrease the exposure. Um, so you're talking about you know most yes yeah most adjustables um, most adjustable and you know to be honest a lot of from what I've seen a lot of razors struggle with the adjustable um, you know early comments I've seen about the Miramasa is it's great it's a beautiful piece but yeah. regardless of what setting you're on for a lot of people it still feels a little bit mild. And the first iteration of the Rex Ambassador, people had the opposite. They said, I just stay on one, like anything above one. And I feel like I'm taking my face off, right? And then they went back to the drawing table and they adjusted it some more to try to fine tune it. But it seems like a tough nut to crack, to be honest. Um, and it, it's not how one... About, how about if you could do hmm? this? How about if you could do a single edge and the adjustable, instead of changing the blade gap, would just change the blade expo exposure. That's no that's actually a good idea. Write yeah. that down. <laughs> I should hire you. I should hire Brandon. <laughs> Pick up stuff. That that was that was that was a winning winning idea right there. It's actually <laughs> I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Think that of just you know because you know gap is so much, but blade exposure, um, you know really determines a lot as well so everyone's done the gap part so you know how about we do the blade explosion thing so you know you can go way back you know negative exposure to however much positive you want to um and essentially all that would happen would be the blade posts would adjust you know instead of instead of the top cap you know moving just the blade posts would move to give you more or less blade exposure or just the plate you know, you could just have yeah. a. You could have it so that the. Yeah. You could have it so the safety, the safety bar just moves out or in. Yeah. Um, no, that's actually a great idea because, like, as far as I can tell, right there, when it comes to DEs especially, there are two fundamentally different kinds of DEs that I've seen, um, and, I, and we're not talking about slants or anything like that. You have DEs that tend to be. Um, the gap is less important and the exposure is more important. A blackbird, I would say, fits in that category. With the blackbird, the gap is so insignificant, they don't even tell you what the gap is. Mm -hmm. They just say it's a small gap. And, you know, so that, that razor is all exposure. And um, I think people who like straight razors lean towards that type of razor yeah. because they're used, to, they're used to feeling the blade, right? Yeah. And then you feel have where it is, other... feel what's going on with it. Yeah. And then you have um, DEs that have more of a guided angle. Uh, you know, a, a Henson would fall into that category. Um, I, I would say, and you know, Chris from Carve can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I would I would say the Overlander probably falls into that category. Um, the the Rockwell, the Yates, um, my own razor falls into that category, where you have a fairly strong shave plane defined by the cap and the base plate, yeah. and then um, depending on the gap, you get more efficiency. And when you raise the gap, you you can't help but raise the exposure a little bit because you're basically dropping the plate down. Yeah. And then that that exposes more underside of the blade. So you're going to get some more exposure, right? Um, and for those type, those users, they find the angle with by using the shave plane as a guide. Mm -hmm. So they're like they're two different kinds. I think two different kinds of shavers, really, DE shavers. Um, and it would be cool to make a razor that, uh, an SE razor that suits both, or that works for both. It's, you know, I mean, it's it's something that hasn't been done yet. So put that in your, uh, put that in your, um, you know, your uh, mental catalog. It's filed. I just filed it. Filed. Done. You know, like Jason said to me, this aristocrat. You know, you kind of get into like what they were doing back then. I mean, if you guys can see how when you're. Mm -hmm. Opening it, it starts to elevate that center post before it, it opens up. Also, oh, that mm. rat, look at that, um, look at that um, barber pole uh, handle right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't. Well, I mean, there's the case right there. So and the, that's the, actually the yeah, the, mm, mm, uh, but it's got that. That's, same, that. that's where this comes from too, because you'll yeah. notice a lot of razors have this kind of thing where you have the little nub on the bottom and a gap yeah. here. 
It's it's a trope. It's a trope, right? I think um, Rockwell has that kind of thing going on. A lot of razors have that. Yeah. It just because some designs just work, and some things, you know, <laughs> looks like the bottom should be adjustable. <laughs> yeah. The OVO Yeah, but also, also yeah. again, when it's the, when it's a trope, when it's a design trope that you see time and time again, it kind of you know what you, at a glance what you're looking at, right? Like when you see that, that just says DE because you're used to seeing that kind of thing. Or, you know, there's no reason that the top of the handle of the DE has to do this. Like, like it, ha it doesn't have to look like the top of a, a ballpoint pen, right? Why does it do that? Well, it, it's a trope. It, it was done before and DEs kind of look like that. It's, it's, it's aesthetically pleasing. So people do it. That's yeah. That's why you're going to bring make every other type of razor gem razor injector razor <laughs> i'd love to see some good some good new injector razors like you know i mean the schick injector is one of my absolute favorite razors in the world it's like you know extremely efficient um and just very comfortable do you want to say hi oh yeah i, I would love to see hey, look turn around <laughs> what's up dude <laughs> say hi High five. <laughs> um, um, some new um, injector based on yeah. that, um, I think would be awesome. Well, Lots of votes on for injector, injector, injector. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, here's a good one here. Uh, oh, I mean, they're all good, but Addison Road asked, Caleb, uh, do you, well, I don't know if it was a question or a statement. Do you take tons totally. of supplies when you travel? Take tons of shave supplies when I travel? I mean, what don't you who who what i couldn't i couldn't be i couldn't be away for this long without having stuff with me look i i, I got like i got, got like a half dozen sets of soap over here at least yeah it's like i don't know i i got my own my own mini trc over here um yeah i i don't know i couldn't i couldn't be away this long without I need, I need that. I need that variety, you know? <laughs> so you might get through a soap in your lifetime. Me, no. <laughs> so every time you travel, just take one, you know, and in, in the next five or six years, you might go through one tub. <laughs> I'll, the only way I'll ever kill a tub is if I dedicate myself to tub killing, like some people do, where I'm just like, I'm, and the thing is, I'm not a daily shaver. I'm like, a, I'm like, if I if I'm not super busy, I'm a two or three day shaver. Yeah. And some recently, I've been getting so busy, I'm going like five or six days without a shave, and um, then I get depressed and I just have to have a shave. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but you know, daily shavers, I can see tub killing and and dome shavers, right? Because if you're daily dome shaving, I, I feel like you can you can do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, after Five days if I don't shave, people start handing me spare change in the street. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> just don't that look good. Um, then uh, do do do. Uh, Kim Gray, do you have a particular blade that you suggest for your razors? Um, that's a so. Thank you, J Mac. And and TRC and well everybody really I know you know J Mac advocated these blades for a very long time, and it took me a little while to pick them up, until uh, until they came to TRC, and then I, I picked up um, I think I picked up a hundred pack but I've been seeing people buy like two hundreds or five hundreds some crazy number maybe it was two hundred but would this be you all know which blade yes it would be um, so this blade. This blade, you pair a people's blade, a wisomet, with this copper cap, and I, I swear, you know, unless unless you're one of those people who really likes a very blade forward shave and stuff, um, but if you're in the very smooth, very comfortable, um, you know, nice, efficient, two and a half, three pass shave camp, put a wisomet in this thing, and it's going to be one of the best shaves of your life. Um, and same same with the original Dracat. 
Um, I find that the the original plate on both the Dracont and the Copper Cut do a great job of taming a Kai and a feather too. So if you've used Kais and feathers, especially because the Kai is a little wider, so it gives it a touch more exposure. Um, but if you've used Kais and feathers before and didn't like them, try them in, in a Dracont or a Copper Cut original plate. And you might find that you suddenly like them. Um, but yes, there you go. The People's Blade. I re yes. recommend that for... Actually, I recommend the People's Blade for all of them. You know, if you're an open comb, if you're a plus um, razor, like a plus, plus tricot razor, uh, I still think you're going to love the, the People's Blade. And then my other two go-tos are uh, a Gillette Platinum. That's my, my number two. Mm -hmm. And uh, my number three is, it's like a three-way tie pretty much. Um, GSB, Nasset, or um, Gillette 7 O'Clock Yellow. Mm. Oh, seven o'clock yellows are nice too. I, I haven't used those in a while, but I do remember enjoying those blades. Those, I'm partial to the uh, the seven o'clock perma sharps. Those are mm. those mm -hmm. are nice. But yes, yes, definitely throw this in anything. You're good to go, bud. So, and they say that those wisdom mats are the Paul Silvers, but I just I don't remember the Paul Silver being like that. I remember the Paul Silver being a little bit rough, uh, but the wisdom mat is not rough at all. So I I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just because I haven't used a Paul Silver in a while, but they, I don't I don't remember them being the same. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, people I've heard people say that people are just like yeah, you know the Paul Silver went away and then it just got rebranded or whatever. But the the Wizard Man is basically Paul Silver. I never use Paul Silver. Um, I'm I'm sad about that because people say so many things, and you know it's uh, it's one of those things where I, I think you can get them in a few places still, but, uh, I have some of those, some of the Paul Severs too. And they don't, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's a mental thing, but they don't, they don't feel exactly the same to me. They feel the sharpness. I feel like feels about the same, but I feel like the Wesomet, the Wesomet is a little more smooth. I, I, once again, maybe it's a placebo kind of thing. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. But are the people exactly. And <laughs> Watch it, Art. Can I? It's not the same way. One's called Wizomet and the other one's called Paul Silver. Guys, it's 9 a.m. here and I'm on my second tall boy. Nice. <laughs> Breakfast. Now you're on brunch. Speaking of, I've yeah. got a short boy here right now. I should probably add to it. <laughs> Man, I wish, I wish I could get that here. It's just not available. I mean, you can get it at the bar. You know, uh, if you go out to a bar, I've, I've actually... Uh, I had one of the best old fashions I've ever had the other day at a, at a bar here. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it cost me like sixteen dollars, so I don't know. <laughs> don't don't do that every day. <laughs> and so, hashtag day drinking. <laughs> Caleb, what what does a traditional breakfast look like in Taiwan? That's a great question. Um, it's actually really funky. It really is. So, and I, I want to. I want to correct this because a lot of people have been asking me. They think I'm in Thailand, not the same place. Taiwan and Thailand. No. Um, even my even my company, my game company. I've been here for four weeks. They thought I was in Thailand. I'm like, dudes, I'm not in Thailand. They're different places. <laughs> Thailand is like paradise. I wish I was in Thailand. It's you know beaches and like palm trees and stuff. No, that's not where I am. Um, yeah, but uh, the traditional breakfast here is. It's actually rice and um, garnishes. You can get a variety of different garnishes, sweet or savory. And it's kind of like Western breakfast where we have, like, we have bread, a lot of bread, and it's like either sweet or savory. You get sweet crepes or savory crepes, sweet French toast or savory French toast. Do you know what I mean? Um, they just, just substitute the bread for rice. And then you can get like little, little mini sausages or... Uh, like different kinds of pickled vegetables, salty pickled vegetables, which are, you know, savory, or you could have some kind of sweet garnishes on top. Uh, and you could get like a little bowl of soup, like breakfast soup. I don't know. It's funky. Yeah. But, uh, but I like it. Of them, it's, uh, you know, it's rice is kind of like the main staple. It's kind of the main everything. And then there's basically kind of soup with kind of everything. Um, and soup yes. as a breakfast was something that I had heard of and thought, 
that's that's strange. I've never heard of having soup for breakfast, but you know, whatever. Yeah. The one thing I would say is do not get a breakfast sandwich at a traditional breakfast sandwich place. If you want a breakfast sandwich, go to one that does Western style breakfast sandwiches. If you go to a traditional breakfast sandwich place, if you're ever here, you will be surprised. Uh, they put they, their their idea of a breakfast sandwich traditionally here, and, and I'm not I'm not knocking anybody. I you know my my family's here. Yeah. But just as a Western person, it's a, it's a shock. Their idea of a breakfast sandwich is bread, two pieces of bread, peanut butter, alfalfa sprouts, dragon fruit, like tuna, uh, some eggs. I, it, it's almost just like they just took like all whatever they could find that was nutritious and put it between two pieces of bread. So it'll be like it'll be like the healthiest sandwich you've ever had. And the weirdest flavor combination <laughs> you've ever had peanut at the same time. Tuna, I, I find, is like, you know, spaghetti and meatballs. I mean, they just go together. <laughs> like ham. Alfalfa, alfalfa sprouts and dragon fruit. Why not? Why not? You know, uh, it, it, it flosses your teeth <laughs> while you eat. You know? <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, <clears throat> Bolsey Vintage Head Shaver asked, who is your favorite Head shaver, Caleb. Who is my favorite head shaver? Man, you're putting me on the spot, dude. You can't do that. Dan Rather. Uh, <laughs> well, my favorite head shaver is, is going to have to be the mostly vintage one because he head shaves with both of my razors as his goat for head shaving. Nice. So, and also he's a pretty awesome dude yeah. when he's not being an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Smells good too. Can confirm. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Probably, uh, gonna, he's going to be uh, joining us tomorrow for the uh, Saturday morning live. So if you're still awake or if it's tomorrow night, whatever, um, I don't know what time it'll be at 9 a.m. Eastern where you're at, Caleb. Um, That's 9 a.m. Eastern. That'll be 10 p.m. here. That'll be 10 p.m. Saturday. Perfect. Um, <laughs> I should be around. I, I, I can catch it. Nice. Yeah. We'll be there, Sully, Ken, and Thomas the Shaver. So. But, um, yeah, should be good times. So hopefully you can check it out. But, yeah, Ken. You know what, Chris? I'm, I'm sick of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris keeps Chris keeps ragging me over here. Shave hole, get it right. All right, fine. But he's not being a shave hole. There, fine. Are you happy? Oh, oh man, yes, Kim. There's definitely a sexy overload in here tonight. <laughs> oh man, man. Uh, do do do. Uh, oh here's a good one. snap! Damn you, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just waiting for the Yaki Jacob clone. Oh my gosh! Enable Shaver, with your background in art, Caleb, ever think of making soap label art? I have. Um, I I actually entered a, a competition for the Alpha Alpha Noir soap label competition and won, and uh, it's right. out there. That's right. If you've ever seen the Alpha, Alpha Noir label. That is, uh, that's me. I designed that. Bam! Right there. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Where, is that you? There you go. That no. You? People have asked me that. That's the Wickham Soaps, that's the Wickham Soaps logo, but I mean. Oh. I thought you did like a side profile, you know, like you used to do like in school. I'm saying it's quite close. Trace with the pen pencil. <laughs> no. I, I think, I think Wickham Soaps is just stalking yeah, me. Yeah, because that's he's got that good hair like you do. Look at it. He's got some thread. Uh, hey, look at how shiny. See, that's it. Hmm. Oh, that's good, man. Oh, Tiki, bro. That's that Tiki beautiful. nailed it. Yeah, yeah, he did a good job. That is a beautiful label, brother. I love that. That is awesome. I love that. I'm actually, you know, I've been, I've considered doing more because um, oh, I love I love the soap labels. Yeah, that's a beautiful art, art, man. I love it. And it's, you're in there too, so 
<laughs> yeah, Tiki, um, Tiki said, looks like the great Gatsby. You're not wrong. You are not wrong at all, actually. Um, that was part of the inspiration. So Great Great Gatsby takes place in the 20s, um, I believe, in the in the U.S., which was like the Art Deco, Deco period. And yeah. that was also the film, film noir period. And because it was called Alpha Noir, I decided to kind of lean into that Art Deco art style. And that's that's where that came from. Very nice. Very cool. Yep. You are not wrong also, Carlos. I think Carlos I think Carlos has my my tub of uh, Alpha Noir actually. He took it. <laughs> oh. Well, well, let's give some stuff away, brothers. Let's give some stuff stuff away. Okay. Let's do it. We have I mean, that. It'll be this one. one but uh, it could be this one. I don't know. Cuz I've been breathing but that's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Copper Cant Razor with stand provided by the Razor Company by the awesome brother over there, Jason. So, and, and all right, so we got that one. And Caleb, you said you're giving one away too. Okay. Um, all right. So Not a fun kind of thing. for for me, it's going to be it's going to be a direct hunt, yes, stainless steel. Um, on the next drop, which is coming within the next week or two. Nice. Nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we got 51 people watching. Um, so I'm going to have Brandon pick this one. So one to you're, 51, Brandon. You're like crying inside a little bit right now, aren't you, Angelo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am you're going to like, four. I wish I could leave and join this giveaway. I know, like. <laughs> that's okay that's okay that's okay <laughs> oh a las cuatro okay horas pues keep a simple shaving Oscar oh man, man. he can just come over and pick it up <laughs> congrats brother congrats Dude, keep a simple shaving, Oscar. Man, it, that that is an amazing dude. Check out his YouTube channel. The man is just, oh my gosh, uh, watching him straight razor shave, and he holds it like different than like uh, that anybody I've ever seen. He'll take the the handle and flip it all the way, and beautiful stuff, man. Gorgeous man. Congratulations, man, Oscar. So yeah, you're getting this set, brother. So yeah, stop by tomorrow. I'll be here. Come on, hook you up. Um, and thank you, thank you so much, Jason, for for yeah. offering that up. Yeah. As as always, they don't call him Saint Jason for no reason. The truth. That is the truth. See, I keep telling you, all this right here, that's the glow from him. <laughs> it's not a light here. That's that's because of him. So, all right. So, uh, Caleb, so it's your turn, brother. Uh, one to oh, we're, fifty. We're doing them. Yeah, well, we're doing them back to back. Yeah. All right, all right. One to fifty-six. One, one to fifty-six. All right. I don't want to make it too. No, I mean I don't want to mean be mean to the people who are like later down in there. Let's do somewhere right in the middle. Let's do twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. Be here for a second. Oh, oh, Brandon Chaves, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Almost there. That's what she said. Yes. <laughs> huh? Oscar, are you serious? Well, Again? this one here. Because he's asked, okay, this is totally not rigged. Totally not rigged. The Canadian Mafia has the rigor. Um, Addison Road, Stacy Gallant. Addison Road. Congratulations. Nice. So, you want them to reach out to you for the? You want Addison Rowe to reach out to you, Caleb? Well, so here's the thing, okay. and I and I don't want to put him on the spot. All right, all right, we're all good. He said awesome, so he's he's accepting the win. So yeah, hit me up. It's going to be a dracant of your choice, um, and that'll be you know your choice of plate type or yeah everything. Just let me know. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so. Great. Oscar, what did he say? He said the respin. Orale. Okay, Brandon, pick another number, brother. 
One to fifty-six. Uh, um, one. <laughs> Keeps it easy. Thank you. <laughs> oh no! Totally rigged. Mark, do North shaves. What? It's going what? to Canada. <laughs> so which which one was that? The, the that was, that's the copper cans with, with the stands. Yeah, I say can because it can, man. I love this darn thing, brother. I see the copper. I see. So yeah. So um, Mark, send me your information um, to Angelo dot Amador Junior. We need your email and shipping address, and we'll get you this set set out um, because Oscar said to respin. So and he may have it already. I think that's what it is. Also need your social security number. Your yes, that. Or yeah. Um, blood type, shoe size, what else? Uh, belt width. Yeah, we're going to need all that, bro. <laughs> Favorite peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we go, plans for, because, I mean, this I, it's just going to be like, a, I just know it's going to be like a stellar year for wet shaving. So, what is Altworth's razors going to be bringing to 2023? Well, um, so we have the new the new restock of the stainless steel. Um, the the new thing with that restock is we have a four inch handle coming out now. So mm. for there have been people who've been asking for it. They you know they they like the longer handles. So um, we had to get our plate, we had to get our plate levels in first. We had to get our stand in first. You know, and um, we can't just roll out a million parts at once. So the four inch. Some people have been waiting for it for a while and it is in this next drop you're gonna have the option to pick up a four inch handle and the stainless steel um we're going to be getting a very very nice hand-tied shd badger knot it's a custom badger knot um mm -hmm. that's going to be coming for the altair brush for those who prefer a badger over synthetic although come on not best knot of 2022 guys um but if you like if you like badger and you just cannot deal <laughs> sorry singer sig solo is like finally just so you guys know behind the scenes he's been ever since since the dracant release like back, back in june <laughs> he's been hitting me up he's like are you gonna have a four inch handle at some point <laughs> so he really wants that four inch handle um so he's very stoked on that but yeah, I know there are a lot of people who are waiting for the Badger Knot, and um, it's going to be an SHD, you know, like, high-quality hand-tied Badger Knot. I think, you know, knots that it might be analogous to would be, um, you know, the, the Grizzly Bay um, <clears throat> uh, Chisel and Hound Fanchurian yeah. style knots. Yeah. Yeah, so, something in that in that vein. I, 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 I tested out, like, a half dozen different knots, and I settled on um you know the quality i want and I, I think it's it's very very solid so um that'll be coming uh the plus plate for the copper cunt a lot of people have loved the design of the copper cunt they like the brass they like the price point um but they want the more efficiency that comes with the plus level plate that we had on the dracant and uh, so a lot of people have been asking about that that is coming very soon um, we should see it within maybe six to eight weeks ish, something like that. But it's it's already in production. And uh, what else? Ti, we have a Ti prototype uh, for the Drick Hunt. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but it is not the same as the Drick Hunt that you've seen. It it will shave like the Plus, uh, but it will not look like the Drick Hunt that you've seen before. It. It's got a it's got a different look coming, and the TI material. So it won't it won't shave exactly like the plus because it's TI. And as we all know, that it kind of changes the shave a little bit. I don't even know I don't even know what's going to shave like because this is the first prototype. But um, I'm very excited because I feel like it's going to be awesome. They're going to have a yes stand. Yes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so that's coming soon, and I will yeah, uh, pending you know pending some feedback, some user feedback. I'm um, I'm probably gonna do a closed pass around. It won't be an open pass around, just to get some uh, user feedback. But if anyone is interested, 
me up, and we'll we'll try to get you on a pass around list for that prototype. Um, and then, you know, pending that, I'm gonna. I think I'll do a sign up sheet because TI is uh, kind of involved, so I need to gauge interest and uh, understand like how many people really want one. So I'll probably do a sign up sheet on the website uh, just to understand how many need to be made. And then finally, there is a there's a thing. A secret thing, which, <laughs> yeah, which, which, which will be coming uh, at an undisclosed time at some point later this year. Um, yeah, and that that's in the works too. So, a but thing that's very could be coming at a time. A thing it's could be coming. Specific. That is very specific. Yeah, so, yeah it's a thing it. coming at a time, an undisclosed thing. Um. I, I love I love Mark. I'm in Toronto, Caleb. I would def do it. Yes, I I know you're in Toronto, Mark. <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, who's calling it the Ticons, the TI count? Oh, I, I think that I mean, was I think that was Ken. <laughs> I mean, following the so for those those who don't know, count means edge in uh, in Swedish, and so Drakant means dragon edge. Copper cant means brass edge or copper edge. And uh, so TI cant would mean titanium edge. Kind of makes sense. Mm. I like it. I can't <laughs> wait. Man. Can I, wait? I mean, just the, the, the design. I mean, you as a person. I mean, yes. I cannot, so much stuff that's happening this year is just amazing, bro. And you are definitely, you know, a, a one-up when it comes to the wet shade community. And... Just plug there if you play Mario Brothers. So, <laughs> but uh, for sure, man. Cheers. It's awesome having you on, you know, and, um, you know, definitely looking forward to doing some more of this. And then if there's ever a time, you know, for like a Saturday morning, if you're, you know, back in country or anything like that, as far as to be on a morning shave with, you know, with all of us here for the TRC Lives on Saturday morning, you guys, both of you are always welcome for sure. Just let me know when you want to come on. I'd love to, man. I, I love, I love live shaves. I love, I love shaving with you guys. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm back in like a week, so anytime. Hey, oh yeah, do, let, do, we'll do like an English muffin with rice, dragon fruit, uh, <laughs> tuna on it. You know why yeah, not? We're after why not? <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll day drink some bourbon too with it. We'll wash, <laughs> we'll wash the alfalfa sprouts down with some bourbon. Right. right. Just That's wrap right. it in a big flour tortilla and dip it in some tapatio sauce. Yes. <laughs> Brother, it's good to see you, man. You, you, as always, you look amazing, man. I hope you're feeling better and everything, bro. Thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was awesome, guys. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what, what's got coming up for this year. So um, safe travels coming home, Caleb. Brandon, take care. Everybody, thank you. If I missed your comments or anything like that, forgive me. Um, you know, I'm only five foot, so <laughs> I miss everything. <laughs> Enjoy but, it, everyone. It's a good yeah. time. That's right. So on behalf of Jason, Crystal, and everybody over here, love you guys. Be safe, and uh, thanks for coming out. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.